Hey Martin, welcome to episode 58 of Illuminating Rounds. You are Hello Dave, how, how are you? I'm good, I mean you're in your TARDIS. <laughs> I've got my little booth here, yeah absolutely, there's, uh, there's dirty clothes over there, there's this there's, there's random people, you know, it's in here. I can concentrate on that illuminating rounds. Yeah. I feel like a, a cellmate is going to walk past at any point and uh, <laughs> start talking about the, I don't know, what is it, the prison wallet or something? I don't know. <laughs> so... It's quite nice. It feels really cosy in here. I'm thinking about this, you know, leaving it up when I'm not recording. <laughs> for yeah. little, it's it's spoiling the point if you put a little bed at the bottom of it. And <laughs> <laughs> Sleep under the desk down here. Yeah. You're all right. <laughs> anyway, enough about your... Uh, your prison wallets and everything else. Um, how's yeah. how's everything? Are you good? Yeah, no, everything's really good. Yeah. Good, good. We um we played recently. We had a, a face-to-face game in Blackpool, which Ooh. we're going to talk about. Um, so we had a great time in Blackpool. We're going to talk about that. Uh, first things first, we have to welcome a new Patreon, uh, Charles Janon. Uh, thank you for... Uh, now you, I think you've got a better pronunciation, Martin. You wanna... Well, I don't know how it's pronounced, Dave. No. I mean, we... It, Janone, I think yeah. I suggested, but that's but John better. actually is might might very well be, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, thank you, thank Charles. you, Charles. Thank yes. you very much, Charles. That's very, well, much appreciated. Handle, thank so. you. Welcome to the welcome to the club. Um, yeah. We're going to talk about a gut punch. We finished off gut punch, didn't we? Um, hmm. With just just two rules mistakes or setup mistakes that we made. No, two setup mistakes. So I think a lot more rules mistakes. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Both of them my fault. Um, so the middle board. Uh, George spotted that the middle board should have been uh, flipped, basically. So, um, which would have actually made it a little bit harder, I think, for me, because the factories that you had to attack were closer to you. However, mm. what made it a lot harder for you, I think, was my anti-aircraft gun potentially being in the building, which shouldn't have been in the in the factory. That's a, a rule from Red Barricades that you're allowed guns in factories and mm. not everything else, which always confuses right, me. I, 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 see. Yeah. I always figure that. Factories, you know, you'd think, wouldn't you? You'd think that a build a gun could could be. That's a lovely cup you have there, Martin. Have you noticed it? Have you seen? Have you seen these? They're seen really these. good. <laughs> That's um, yeah. So good, good advert. So our illuminating rounds coffee mugs um, with some with as a logo. Yeah, it's just there. Is it just there? Yeah, very subtle. Very logo, subtle. But very nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, are available. Uh, if you are a Patreon, you can get one for a discount of your monthly patronage. Uh, subscription just get in touch and we will figure out how to get them off to you uh, we are sending them out as we speak so um, I think Australia is a bit tricky because I'm struggling to get FedEx from here because uh, mm. it's only FedEx that is um, getting out of the country or into the country for, for Australia so uh, but other, other than that uh, give me a mm. shout and I will um, I will do our but best the delays again. are temporary aren't they they're just to do with Covid and that's right presumably at some point that, that'll ease up yeah exactly exactly um, so yeah we finished off Gut Punch we'll talk about that we um we've got a little uh, audio clip from Toby talking about foxholes. Um, Toby's holes. Yeah, Toby's holes. Um, and he's going to do kind of a, a like a little succession of um, tips and, and bits and pieces around that uh, around the defence. And we're also going to talk about dispatches from the bunker as well. So uh, you've had a little look at those as well. And we obviously yeah. we played um, gut punch. That'll be the first of many, I'm sure, that we'll play from dispatches. Um, we've mm. got an active subscription now for, for those guys. So that's that. Um, Blackpool. We should talk about Blackpool first, really. So yeah. our little tournament after action report. Uh, first of all, big thanks, I suppose, to Martin Mayers and to uh, Simon Staniforth, uh for organising. And, and I think there's a third guy now, isn't there? There's n- Well, OK, so Morris isn't. Oh, right. Oh, right. OK. But only because right. Morris does double one with Simon and Martin. Right, okay. And so, yeah, so Morris was just able to play. But Morris did give me a very nice poker chip with the prep fire and the, all the phases on, which I've, I'd seen around that I kind of quite yeah. liked, um, which is quite nice for newer players to see what phase the, the game's in and to see what's mm. coming up, which is quite nice. And it was a good little tip to uh, to print that onto a poker chip. There's a few companies that do that. Um, so I'll, um, I'll get that out in a bit and, and show yeah. you. Um, and the, but, the really great thing about this tournament was we had about 50 people there, I think, 50 guys there. Brilliant attendance, which, wasn't it? Which is, you know, more than we were getting, I think, at, at most UK tournaments, even yeah. before the, the pandemic. And I think there's, uh, but it was just, a, it was just brilliant to see everybody. And there was a lot of new guys, weren't there? A lot of new guys. Really impressive. Yeah, a lot of, lot of new yeah. guys. And you played, you played a gentleman uh, and 74 years old. 
74 mm-hmm. years young, I should say. He was, you know, he was yeah. very, very capable, very able. Yeah. How did you get on? Mike Bingham, absolutely. Mike Bingham, well, okay. So uh, Mike beat me at guards counterattack. <laughs> <laughs> He'd, uh, he 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 did very very well. I mean, I, yeah, I, I suppose I've you know helped a little bit. I like to like to feel probably I, I contributed a bit <laughs> with some ideas, but but yeah, learning very very quickly and uh, yeah. a real pleasure, a real gentleman actually. Yeah, real that was pleasure. very nice, wasn't he? It was very nice, and it just it just shows you, doesn't it? Like you know, you can you can start this hobby at any time. Mm. There's no there's no age barrier to it. Um, yeah. He was as well received as anyone else there to play, and you know, it was he was good fun. He got into the spirit of it yeah. all. As good as much a laugh, as good a laugh as anybody else. And in fact, um, and, and Mike, I, I, I think I may have said this to you, but he's like kind of like because he because he was he's an ex policeman, he's a retired policeman. That kind of legal training, he's got a little bit of legal training there, comes out when he, he's dealing with the rules because he's forensically accurate about the rules. <laughs> and I kind of go, ah, oh, you know, you kind of have to, you know, you assault move, you just sort of move them in. You're only allowed to move one hex. He's like, well, uh, what, what's this about locations? Right? Because it's, what does he mean by a location specifically? <laughs> okay. It took me like two years to realise that location was different to Hex, you know. <laughs> so, so yeah, he's uh, really, really been fun playing him and teaching. Yeah. And I've been he, he texts me questions now and again. Good. And I, you know, I stop, I stop the, you know, the t- kids I'm teaching at school. And I go, hang on a minute, I've just got, to, <laughs> I've just got to tell Mike Bingham how to route from this dodgy position. <laughs> he didn't do a lot of that against you, did he? That was a the thing. There was not a lot. No. Um, it was it was a really good time, wasn't it? I mean, it was you know everyone was on good form. Uh, it was lovely to see everybody again. I think people were generally quite happy to be out and playing ASL uh, for the first time in a little while, which was which was quite nice. Um, it was it was a good time, wasn't it? I mean, the weather was freezing cold. As uh... do you know what though? I had the most amazing view from my room. I mean, I would have happily paid double for my <laughs> view because there was literally nothing you could see out of my window except the ocean. Oh wow! I mean, I can vaguely see the the Statue of Liberty in the distance, just, <laughs> just, just literally just ocean. It was uh, it was it was spectacular. I mean, proper black ball grey. Yeah. You know, the sky, the sea. Yeah. No, not clear where one ends and the other starts. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that no, was spectacular. It was freezing. Yeah. It's very good, very good. So, um, so the tournament is all around helping Bounding Fire playtest uh, their upcoming products. Uh, and so the, um, the the scenarios in theory are blind scenarios. People in theory haven't played these before. And now a couple of these scenarios had been played by quite extensively by some playtesters who happened to be in the tournament. Um, and that was, I guess, the only kind of downside to that format. Um, but it was really it was really good. Um, it was nice to play scenarios that you didn't feel like you had to prepare for uh, up front. So as far as my tournament goes, well, I, I played Toby Pilling first of all. We had a, a friendly game of second step from red october or red factories um it's a it's quite unbalanced in favor of the russians i took the russians because that gives toby a bit of a game um i i rolled badly i played badly um toby had great not not i'm not saying luck great effect from his rocket oba which is just devastating on roof factoryless roofless factories um and I still beat him. I mean, it was so proud of you. So proud of you. No, but not, Wrong not, to, not due to skill or anything. It's <laughs> if you want a challenge, I think taking the taking the Germans on uh, against the Russians in second step is is certainly uh, something that's worth worth a go. But um, you know, there are always going to be opportunities for players to play unbalanced scenarios. New players that want to have a go at something from Red Factories, for example. Um, and it was it was a fun scenario. I mean, it was. It was nice. Um, the kind of the, the 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 kind of the unique aspect of it is that the Russians have six groups that have to go into six different buildings. So the, um, the 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 kind of the difference was that there's a slightly different number of uh, units in each building. So in theory, you could kind of work out which group was probably in which building uh, if you really wanted to try and make make that uh, a thing. I mean, it, it didn't really matter. The other thing I did badly in it was. Um, and you know, this goes back to Toby's kind of like um, thoughts on the defence. Was I had the fortified locations, and Toby's advice on this is: if ever you see a fortified location in a scenario and it doesn't say that t- tunnels are not applicable, you always take the tunnels. There's never, there should be never an instance where you take the fortified locations. And if you do take the fortified locations, you don't do what I always do, which is put it right up at the front to try and kind of blunt the attack. But you put it right at the end and it's the last few buildings return to sort of capture the picture yeah because then 
as mm. as the last squad comes in and advances in for the close combat for the win. Yeah, 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 and that's that was some good advice there. I thought which was uh, which was quite important. Yeah. It's, it's brilliant how they wouldn't even know that it was fortified. So you've got a completely relaxed opponent, haven't you? Because they don't know it's fortified. They'd say, well, I can easily get it in, kill them. Yeah. If, yeah. if, if they know, they can they can use a demolition charge or something, can't they? But it's, uh, yeah, no, it's a good, very good advice. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, so with that victory under my belt, I was confident that I was going to win the tournament. Uh, we were in groups of four. I had, um, who do I have? I had Joe Arthur. I had a gentleman called Michael... And I had um, Martin Vicker in my group, which was pretty pretty tough little group. It is a good group, very good um, group. So I uh, played the first game. Uh, it was a uh, Russian and Finnish. Uh, the Finnish had the flamethrowers coming through a, like a, a railway station to attack the Russians, defended a, a factory, and uh, lost that one. So never mind, moved on. Uh, played the next one against Martin Vicker. Uh, I was the Japanese. There's no point in me telling the scenario names because they're not published yet. And, and so yeah. it's, uh, but was the Japanese uh, against the British? Uh, I was actually I was the British uh, attacking um, Martin's Japanese. Managed to lose that one, and then finally um, I took on Joe Arthur. It was probably the, 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 the you know the funniest game of the tournament. Uh, Joe was Joe was a great uh, great opponent and friend of the show. I like to think Joe uh, it was always gives yes. us a nice comment. And um, we took on, uh, what was I? I was the, uh, I was the, what was I? I don't remember what I was. I think I was the defending finish uh, in a scenario that looked really tough for the attacking Russians and managed to lose it. But right at the last, and, and the little fun thing was there was a whole bunch of stuff going on. There was a load of counters on the last term. And I must have had, I don't know, like, I think I had to capture three buildings on the last turn. He'd captured 20. I need to get three back. And I'd got two back through running uh, a guy across the road and stuff to capture two back. And then so I needed one building. And there was about three or four different close combats that I could have tried to go for. And I kind of, you know, looked at the board and I've tried to figure out all my moves. And I said, okay, I'm done. Your know, movement's done. And he's like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Are you really sure? <laughs> so <laughs> I'm looking. And I'm looking under every counter, every kind of, you know, first fire counter or whatever it is to see. I'm like, yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm done. He's like, are you really sure? <laughs> so, okay, wait a minute. And I realised that my uh, my infantry were in close combat, not in melee with the um, uh, with the motion tank. So he'd kind of freeze me with the motion tank. So obviously they can come out uh, and and move into a different uh, different place to try and capture a building back again. So I um I think I had four close combats, all of which I was probably not favourite for, for any of them. Didn't mm. win outright any of them to, to win the game and, and lost it but it was fun and and that was yeah. the main thing and so um so it was appreciated and then you and i played as well and we played sparrow force uh from yeah. the uh, action pack recent yeah that was um that was pr- oh, actually it was the australian one wasn't it it's the, it's the action pack that features only australia yeah the land that land down on the one yeah um and that was pretty good i think i got a bit lucky in the end there i think my sniper helped helped out i've got a photo i think of yeah. us playing here yeah, that was very interesting. It'd be quite an interesting study that scenario as well. I mean, I you know I didn't didn't play a perfect game either, but it definitely looked like I was um, on for winning at one point. And it, yeah. uh, I actually I remember a couple of the mistakes I made, um, which I think would have made would have nailed, you know sort of secured the win for me. But it was a very very good scenario. Yeah, it was it was good fun, wasn't it? Um, so yeah. how about you? What did, what did we heard about your game? Uh, yeah, so so I I, I I couldn't go for the tournament because because uh, I still got a ridiculous uh, actual paid job, but. Uh, uh, yeah, next year I should go a little bit earlier. But uh, I played Mike Bingham in, in Guards Counter Attack, and, uh, and and he won that, so it was, it was good giving me his first victory in ASL. Um, I played the great uh, Martin Willey. Ian um, Willey. What's that? Ian Willey. Oh, sorry, Ian Willey. I don't know where I got Martin from, but Ian <laughs> Willey. <laughs> I don't know where that comes from. The great Ian Willey, who who produces all the um, you know the wonderful dioramas, and he's an old friend, isn't he? He's an old yep. friend of both of us. Um, played a, a game with him. I was the Japanese, and I was like uh, had to cross the board through his sort of British Indian troops and uh, and, and exit off the, the other side. And I went through him like a hot knife through butter, to such an extent that he was ready to resign. And then somehow he pulled it back and won at the end. Was this the deluxe pack scenario? 
Yes. Ah, so that's the deluxe it pack was, that, that... It I was from it. your deluxe pack. Yeah, yeah of course yeah. it was from your deluxe yeah. pack. Now, I can't remember what it's called. I think it was called Play Uno. It was Playing Uno, yeah. yeah. It was very, very good. It yeah. was very, very good. I thought I played it very, very well at the beginning. And um, he had a you know, solid sort of defence. Things went my way. I got, I got rate of fire with the smoke. Like I got, I had about like some six smoke for, for my main move kind of thing early on. It was just smoke everywhere. So that was fantastic. And it's nice when that happens as well. And, and a lot of it was WP, so he was taking rail checks and stuff like that. So I went through my butter, but I got overconfident. I was rushing everything off, but he was able to sort of run things around the back to kind of like tighten the, tighten the sort of gap that I had to get off with. But I had so much, I was still confident. And what I should have done, I had, I had several turns. I took one turn to kind of like weaken him or try to weaken him and get closer. And I had another turn I could have done that. And I thought, well, look, this is child's play to get off. There's no point in in playing it safe here. Let's just run everything off. So I just ran everything off and it, it all broke and pinned and, uh, and stuff like that. And even then it was very close. I think I needed eight, I didn't need 12 points. And I think I got, I got 10 off or something like that. I can't okay. remember. So it was a lot of fun. And it was nice to have the pleasure, the enjoyment of knowing you're going to win and give your the opponent the pleasure of actually winning. You see what I mean? We, we kind of like both winners there, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see which way my tournament's going anyway. So yeah. then I played his nephew in the yes. afternoon. Yes. Um, and he, I last played him when he was about 17, I yes, think. Yes, James. Very, it, yeah. very youthful, uh, obviously at 17, but young looking guy. And I beat him in a scenario at Blackpool. And he came back as a meaty, strong, <laughs> he was, hairy, he was like, he was bearded, like, uh, <laughs> What, he's, he's, he cuts down trees. You know, he's a lump. You know, he's a right. This, this guy is like, um, he's like got the muscles out. He's like a big, sturdy. Yeah. He's like if you he's took um, like a, a caveman with a Viking, with a rugby player, with a beer drinking, lovely, lovely but, guy. But unfortunately, lovely, lovely guy. But unfortunately, uh, that makes it also very intelligent. Beat me very handily at the start. <laughs> <laughs> I played with, with him. And then, of course, I played Sparrow Force with you, which yeah. was a really good game. Mm. Uh, just talk about James as well. This was incredible because mm. James said to me, "Oh, because I said I'm not sure if we played." And he goes, "Yeah, yeah, we played. Um, we played about ten years ago, and there was a hero at the end of the game that that won it." For, and I, I was thinking, "Oh, I, I, I had to check on the archive, found it. I mentioned yeah. the hero. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> I'd, I'd lost to a one up two shot from the hero. That's what it was, um, which is of course why I was going to mention it. But um, no, yeah, encyclopedic memory. No, Brilliant. very impressive." Man. Yeah, yeah, really good. I wish really you could do it nearer because I've got a lot of trees need some work in my garden, <laughs> and uh, I'll be looking for a little bit of a discount. You know, you could, uh, there we go for a game. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So it was a great tournament, wasn't it? We had a good time, mm. um, and I understand. So the final was between uh, Ian Morris and Toby, uh, and Toby lost it on the, the class close combat. All he needed to do was, I think, avoid the ambush, or and he didn't avoid the ambush. He had a, I think, a plus minus two modifier. So he, he was better off in the ambush I think and then he all he had to do was survive the close combat and they both wiped each mm. other out and and uh, Ian won the tournament so Ian Morris uh, yeah. so congratulations yeah. to Ian um, I think there was so another final so as they reached that close combat the ambush role for that it was very much the likelihood was that was was still that Toby would win yeah. I think so yeah I think so, uh, so I love those sorts of games because you know it, it's 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 kind of almost. I mean, it's not irrelevant because it's the final of the tournament, but it's yeah. almost irrelevant who wins that because they they both fought each other to a standstill, yeah. haven't they? they yeah. they're, they're, they're neck and neck at the end of the game. And yeah. we should mention as well that um, that Martin and Simon put a whole load of other bits and pieces on. There was there was t uh, prizes for the usual snake car, snake eyes and box cars, and there was a quiz um, that was very very tough, very tough very. quiz. Um, all around ASL, um, you know what what map location is this and what the back of which AFV is this one and things like that. Uh, but it was a very good quiz. Um, and there were there were prizes for, I mean, all sorts of bits and pieces. So it was great. Um, they did a really good job, I think. So they certainly hats did, off yeah. to those guys. Good job. Yeah. Okay, um, right. let's talk about Gut Punch. Okay, yes. Um, so here is Gut Punch. Okay, so gut punch. We um, we stopped it at the uh, in the middle of German turn two. Uh, you you kind of were already feeling it was a bit tough on the Russians. Now we've got our board slightly wrong, um, yeah. but uh, I think 
this is something that we could, um, you know, we, we've obviously we've started it. And we'll, we'll carry on playing it like this. I mean, that's, yeah. but just be aware if you do play this that the the factory should be on the right hand side as we look at it on this board. Um, so yeah, it's so quite tough. You're trying to take, uh, you're trying to get rid of all the uh, Germans, uh, unbroken Germans from any buildings on the middle board. This board here. Yes. And of course, you had a couple couple of hips. So there's been a bit of searching, hasn't there? That's and, right. Uh, yeah, exactly, there, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so this was. Um, let me just hang on seconds. So um, yeah, you you'd started searching a few of the buildings. Um, the the hips will have to reveal themselves uh, at the end of turn four, just to avoid any kind of last minute uh, cheesiness uh, that's possible. Um, mm. We spotted. Um, that, oh, the other setup problem was that this shouldn't have been a two to eight. This should have been a one two seven, and that mm. actually would have had a bit of an impact here because this gun, I seem to remember, probably, I think this gun hit on your on the exact numbers it needed to hit, possibly yeah. for both of these tanks, and that wouldn't have been the case if this was mm. a one two seven, um, and that's that's our fault for not reading the um, the order of battle correctly, mm. but it's very unusual, isn't it, to be given vehicle crews for gun crews. Um, and That's right. the scenario, although it's all about a hasty kind of um, defense that the Germans put up here, it does, it does perhaps, it did need perhaps kind of pointing out that the 127s mm. that were... That was just a mistake or something. Yeah, and and that's unfair mm. because we should assume that everything has no mistakes. And, and Yes. You know, but, you know, when I, when I mentioned it to you to start with, you know, when we saw it, your first reaction was it was probably a mistake. And, it, and I think we realized then when we read the... Clearly the scenario yeah. card. yeah, exactly. They they got it obviously yeah. right, um, mm. but it is an easy mistake to make, I think, from from that perspective. Yeah. So yeah. that's three mistakes we made on this one for the for the setup. But yeah, um, and it's obviously a little bit tricky to show you which end of the board we're uh, we're at because we kind of flip flip and chop and change each one. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll tr we'll try and run through this nice and quickly. Um, mm -hmm. So basically, what we're doing is is the conscript crew here is going to a conscript squad is going to try and reclaim the. Uh, the gun mm -hmm. and if anything just to and obviously i have to this is a big decision isn't it whether to grab the gun and lose concealment or mm. stay concealed and not have the gun mm. and i kind of felt like if i got away with you know maybe this is an eight up one shot um but if, if i get away with that then i'm in a, a reasonably good position to at least fire the gun once and at least if i if i break it i break it and that's okay yeah. um and, and more than likely will break it. Uh, and then you th you threw the the ban the the, uh, the bazooka at it and the uh, mm. the inherent, and that's what broke the mm. the the, uh, the conscript squad here. And, and the vast majority of my guys are conscripts. Um, yeah. So there's I think there's nine nine conscripts here. And that's my that's my thing, Riz. I'm just hoping for the collapse because they're all conscripts. So I think yep. you'll, you look strong. Yeah, exactly. At some point you'll collapse. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you jump in at the, you try to jump in here, um, and, and I think throughout this scenario, my conscripts were actually having some great shooting. Um, mm. So I got some, I did get some very good low dice. Um, mm. So it certainly helps. Your nine two was very, uh, very strong. Um, mm. Down here, you're starting to move up, and these guys, I mean, you've still got what three, three turns left, but these guys are going to struggle to get back into the. Uh, battle right they're not the going to get into the center it's the, yeah. their battle really is about to stop you recapturing right the, the, the wooden buildings exactly on the, on the middle board yeah exactly uh you scoot past me here i thought about the panzer shot here against yeah. with my hip um hip squad but decided not to take it um and then this is where i, I take you that way yeah you yeah. found me um and then i get the yeah yeah the on the second shot so the the final fire shot Get the, and I start. I start to feel actually that I don't. Know, this felt like you know. Sometimes think it, it, probably mathematically the dice were fair, but in this game I felt like everything went wrong. Yeah. Everything was hard work. That's, that's yeah. how I. And that's not a criticism of the scenario. That's a. It's a reflection, perhaps, of my state of mind and uh, and you know a little bit the way the dice went a little bit. Yeah, and I think I think that's I think that's very true. I think when when any of us are losing or feel like we're losing a game, we're very astute of the or aware of the the bad dice rolls that go against us you know yeah. um and i i'm certainly you know in my mind famous for this you know in terms of i see some bad rolls go against me and i think oh this scenario just you know, doesn't want me to win you know and yeah every yeah. time my opponent rolls well 
Um, and obviously, you, know, nice. you, you, you get some good good dice rolls both sides, but you yeah, tend to course. just think, okay, well, I deserve that because. Of, but you, yeah. You know, it's um, <laughs> it's a state of mind thing, I think. Absolutely, absolutely is. Um, so you can start to grab some prisoners. Uh, we got the oh, the the conscripts down here have taken out one of the um, the SU seventy sixes mm. with a Panzer Shrek, a uh, Panzerfaust, sorry, um, and the Tiger is holding off mm. um, everybody that comes close to it. Yeah, basically. Um, now the other thing about the scenario I noticed was that it didn't have a rule that said that um, the crews couldn't voluntarily abandon the the vehicles. So the other thing that I had at my option was to potentially put one of the tiger we'll put the tiger in a building somewhere and mm. just have you come towards me and then abandon it on the last turn and have the, mm. the vehicle crew come out um, yeah. but I didn't need to do that thanks to what will happen later on you, oh you you um you blow this guy up with a with a nice shot and then uh, cause a flame and that flame we thought okay that's not going to make, make any difference to anything yeah um, and I think we decided not to not to worry about rolling it because there was. A we few, did eventually once your yeah, troops were past it. That's yeah. right, yeah. Uh, but actually, that's that was gonna... a proper old uh, Canadian forest fire there, wasn't it? I think by the time we we, we, we down here, this. yes, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right, exactly. Um, so, um, still pushing hard. I'm going to yeah. zoom in here because this is kind of where the where the real battle is, is taking place. Yeah. Um, and. Um, it's very, very hard, isn't it? Rooting, rooting the guys out of factories. Um, yeah. You know, you're, um, uh, we've got the, yeah, the disruption here of my conscripts. Um, uh, these guys are running back, but they're not going to, they're not going to play very much part. Um, no. In this. There is a possibility of them getting back into a building. And things That's we, right. We, yeah. We keep playing those. Yeah. Uh, it's a nice position here for your issue 26. Yep. And then, uh, this guy here. We go, oh, okay. So yeah, this is the yeah, this is the anti-tank tank gun. Yeah, there's a there's a sneaky line of sight across here. And this was it's funny because I was looking about whether I could get concealment here um, because yeah. these guys at the time were um, were not not in a position to deny concealment. Mm. And um, I said, well, you know, you can string it if you want to. And you're like, yeah, okay. I was, I was thinking, oh, okay, I, get, I can see if. Uh, <laughs> if this is a, a free I didn't want you concealed because I'm planning to go into close combat That's right, and, yeah. uh, and kill the guys yeah exactly exactly and it's kind of important for me to do it yeah and then get them. look at this sniper <laughs> <laughs> this sniper shot is awful I mean this, can... this is a good example of like when I'm just thinking oh for heaven's sake I've got yeah. everything going for me here you've got one one combat factor I've got a full squad and a leader and you're concealed, concealed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and now I'm not concealed and I, I don't have yeah, although you, you, I think your leader stays concealed. I think um, he might do actually. Yeah. Yes, he does. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we have a whole bunch of firing going on. Uh, you're jumping Lots into close, close combat. combat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this again, this is a big, a big one as well. Big, whether you're going to mm -hmm. beat me here because mm -hmm. uh, so you clear out one of the factory uh, locations here. Yeah. In close combat. And this second factory is collapsing now. It's that's the third right. one, isn't it, with the panther in it? That's, that's right. Causing me real difficulties. Exactly, exactly. Okay. And this is where, of course, you've got the strongest forces as well, haven't you? Yes. You've got the yeah. Exactly. Infantry, yeah. yeah. There's a couple of conscript squads, and there's my uh, my eight three eight assault engineer yeah. here as well. Yeah. Um, and you know, you've only got was it uh, it's a couple of turns to go. And I'm running out of infantry. Yes. Yeah. So Actually, I do the. It's increasingly obvious I'm running out of tanks as well. <laughs> but you're okay. You weren't. You weren't terrible. I got quite a few tanks. Um, so I do the old mm. Barker attack. The. Uh, mm. Get your your guys DM'd here. I didn't expect you to do that. Okay, but I did want to reinforce that melee with a. And, and of course, it was worth DMing the, the the other guys. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, some more disrupted guys. Um, I get taken prisoners, but. I can't hold in that position That's in that right. fa third factory yeah. yet. And yeah. like you say, the panther um, holding on, mm. not the tiger. So the melee goes uh, goes well for me, um, yeah. and that kind of helps me now because that frees up uh, mm. these guys to now potentially take these buildings instead two mm. to three, which is um, 
they're pretty good. But you get the, a nice rear shot here on the Panther. Yeah. And you. Uh, and I, I roll very low. I, I hadn't realised just. I knew realised it was going to be a rear shot. I hadn't realised just how low I had to roll to, right, to destroy. Right. I had to roll very low. But yeah. Luckily, so you. you need luckily, to be, I do. Yeah, you got the turret. You had to hit the turret. Um, yeah. Which you did. Um, and I still need like threes or something. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Or fours, uh, perhaps. Yeah, so there you mm. go. Yeah, you get the. So I think now, have I got a chance? I could roll those tanks straight into that factory. I'm thinking I can. But of course, I malfunction the one of the guns. It doesn't yeah. help. Yeah. And one thing you didn't do here that I thought you could mm. have done is when mm. you're recalled here, the yeah. first thing you can do is fire your machine guns. Uh, That's true. You can still do that kind of stuff. Like, I always yeah. think it's like a, like a parting shot of, like, uh, yeah. you know. Hatred. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, so so down, you could still down here, coming up to the last turn, you can still recapture a building on the one of the wooden buildings, like U fourteen or V. I mean, you go for yep. close combats, don't you? But yep. um, it's still mathematically very possible for you to yep. reclaim that exactly. building. Yeah. Now I I thought far sneakier. Yeah. So I I thought what I would try and do is just see if I could get one uh, one guy into close combat here. Yeah. Because uh, you don't. Need, you, it's all you have to do is be in close combat. You don't have right. to kill. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's unbroken, isn't it? That's right. Mm. That's right. Um, so where are we? We're on uh, the final German turn. Mm. So there'll be a little bit of uh, crazy shenanigans down here. Um, I mean, it's worth pointing out, I'm already, I've got some of your prisoners with a broken unit. Yes, that is worth pointing out. It will become out, relevant, isn't it? isn't it? It will do. So these guys here in uh, Z15 um, might become an issue now. One of the things we oh no sorry sorry so this one here this one here yeah it's uh, w seven w, w9 yeah so we check the task check uh, yeah. and these guys have uh, managed to escape the um, uh, and, and now in melee now the thing about this is that we now think these are potentially German multi man counters but I can't be sure I, so, I'm pretty sure they are so from yeah, so the, the victory conditions are German multi-man counters, unbroken German multi-man counters. So we think that that is a German multi-man unbroken counter. So technically... Well, I'm, I'm fairly sure they can recapture buildings. Yeah, yeah this guy is now potentially winning uh, yeah. the game for us. Um, we're trying to just run into these buildings here uh, and you get a, a nice disruption mm. there. You see, um, all of this cheekiness that you're doing over here next to the anti-tank gun, you shouldn't have been able to do because I should have yep. killed you with a close combat yep. with the squad. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you would have, yeah, because then, of course, you've got a great view down the line here as well. Yeah. So nothing can, yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Um, and so I think that, that sniper was was quite impactful. I, I, I mean, it doesn't, obviously, it doesn't mean that you would have won, but it would have been a, no, I, I a close you, to yeah. end, yeah. yeah. Um, so the plan here was to just run a close a conscript mm. squad towards you. And then get you to first fire, and then I thought, okay, well, I can then run. Of course, you don't first fire mm. this guy. Um, yeah. And so then I think, okay, well, am I going to go up? Or, and I th this, is the, mm. this is the mistake. I should have just carried on and gone up. You should have just carried on, yeah. And I didn't. I thought, oh, I'll go for the close combat instead. I've had a second shot from these guys, the um, Z-15 guys. Right, yep, yep. Because they've got the machine gun. Yep. Oh, yep. it only goes so far, but yeah. Yeah, you would have done, you would have done. Yeah. Um, but, but anyway, you, yeah, you, should, you, you probably should have gone straight up. Yeah. Um, so that gets wiped out down there. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, at this point, so I just kind of line up. Um, yeah. There was a oh yeah, so then there was the there was the mm. double six uh, for something. Oh, I was one of your advancing fire shots, I think. And then we get the uh, the melee, and so we get the these guys come back as a. Uh, an armed conscript now. Yeah, yeah. So if there was a doubt, there's no, no doubt, question yeah. that they're a multi-man counter now. Yeah. So your last turn, um, lots of shenanigans. It's you too have to much need. to do. Way yeah. too much to do. Exactly. Um, yeah. So you DM one of them. So this is pretty good. So you've got um, the W nine guy to sort out. You've got these yeah. three up here, and you've got one more up here. So I think five guys. To I think the nightmare for me really is they're not all in one place where yeah. I can converge everything and. Yeah, and, and you know, they're they're spread out, aren't they? I've yeah. got to get a go for that guy. Yeah. Um, um. And then yeah, you don't manage to break these guys with the with tank. the DC. 
yeah, the, and the DC is not mm. not going to be enough. Yeah. And yeah, we break you, and that's the end of the game. So yeah, yeah, it was pretty good, wasn't it? It was pretty good. It was, um, it was good. It was a lot of. I quite like the the little battles going on in different places, and they're all they're all relevant. They're yeah. all going to make a difference. You know, yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah. So mm. gut punch from dispatches. Um, so. What, Dispatches from Uncle, what have you you've had a few have you had a look at the some of the episodes? Yeah, so we've got them all, haven't we? We've yeah. got we've got them all. So I was, uh, I was going, going through them and it's really interesting because I mean for start it's actually got a little bit of history because it's that there was the route report and uh, when that ended, really they were trying to keep the idea alive with dispatches from the bunker way back. I'm not even sure what year it started, but it's a long time ago now, isn't it? Mm. I had a look at the first dispatches from the bunker and the mm. most recent dispatches from yep. the bunker. And there's some remarkable similarities. Like mm-hmm. so, so the very very first one has a couple of scenarios, and it has a write up about the scenarios, which is sort of Schwerpunkt style. Yeah. But it's actually even more detailed, which is really really good. Yep. Um, they also had um, uh, yeah, so they've got these sort of studies. They've also got like tips. Interestingly, the very very first one has tips on concealment. Yep. And the most recent one yeah, has an extensive article by is it Carl? Carl, yeah, Carl, Carl Noriega, yeah. 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 yeah, very extensive. Um, and, and what what I thought was fascinating is about both of them, although the, the one in Dispatches on Bunker 1 is very short, the, obviously the one from Carl is quite extensive, but both of them give you very specific, clear examples of what they're trying to demonstrate. Yeah. It demonstrates the rules, it demonstrates the tactics, and it's it's kind of got that as a sort of feature, Dispatches yeah. from the Bunker. It's very, very good. It's very practical. Yeah, It's an ASLers, ASL thing. And do you know yeah. what I wish, in a way... Way back when I'd started, I'd kind of been a bit onto it because I think like so it's not it, it's probably not quite as good as getting a, a journal, but it's um you know it's got like a it's got an article in there every month or however yeah. often they bring it out. Yeah. You could you could work through an article like that concealment yeah. article and be you know you'd be up and running. You know all about it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's I, very very impressed. I love the fact that I I, ju- I read the most recent concealment article by Kyle and and yeah. was. You know, shocked of how many things I learned in a paragraph. Mm. You know, this long, and yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. berserk squads aren't going to strip concealment. And uh, if you if the berserk yeah, squad yeah. fires at the uh, the unit and gets a pin task check, they're still not going to drop concealment because there's no good order unit. There's someone else concealing. Yeah, yeah. And things like that. Um, yeah. yeah, really, really, really impressive. Um, so you know, it's it's a PDF. It's about what between eight and 12, 13, 14 pages in length. Yeah. Yeah. Four or so colourful uh, scenarios in each one of them. Yeah, uh, they also have a few. Um, I mean, they, they'll talk about their own tournaments and things like that, don't they? Some some of the local tournaments and yeah. things. Oft, often talk about them in advance, so you kind of know what's coming up and yeah. you know what the. What, it's, uh, yeah. And you get the pictures. There's a lot of people I now know what they look like. I know what Carl Nogueira looks like now. I had no idea right. about it really um, this morning. Yeah, yeah. You didn't look at his uh, leader but, counter and see see from yes. that leader counter. <laughs> And I, I'm sure I'm richer for knowing that now. Um, yeah, so, yeah, it was good. Um, yeah, I've, I've written down tawny puffers. I think I'm trying to kind of, you know, talk about how, how the next one coming up is, uh, is is really good. I looked at, I looked at a very interesting website called um, the ASL Scenario Archive. Okay, all right, you okay. You can find out on there how many times these have been played. They got the raw, they got the... It's very good, very good website. Yeah. I recommend people check that out yeah but um there's some very very played scenarios on there yeah so i'm really looking at the raw data i suppose really but um you've got uh you know riding the coattails yep. which is in um 18 um uh uh dispatches from the bunker 18 is 27 32 which is which is pretty pretty rock solid sort of yep. uh, evenly balanced yeah and Gin Drinker's Lane is twenty three twenty seven. Right. In dispatches from Bunker at thirty five. Yeah. And I had a look at both of those magazines to have a look at the scenarios. Really, uh, uh, some of them are easier to get hold of. Some of them, I think, they've been published since in out of and the bunker. Yeah. Only in the magazines, but it tells you where you they can be purchased. Yeah. But in um, in magazine eighteen, they have an in depth study of Hill six two one. Ah. Not only have we played, but I guess every every ASLer with a long weekend. That is played. a scenario, isn't it? That everybody mm. should play once in ASL. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Six two one. But yeah, but the next that's... time I'm going to play it 
with the benefit of uh, of, of these, this extensive study of that scenario because it's and it is it's, I'm looking at it right now and it's what is yeah. it three three page in depth study of it yeah yeah. Um, yeah I haven't read it if I'm honest but uh, you know look, the flavour of the kind of quality that I've seen looks really yeah. good and then in gin drinkers lane whatever in uh, in number thirty five they've got a very long detailed explanation of how to do gun jewels oh wow and i used to struggle with gun jewels but partly because i didn't really understand guns i'm thinking i'm thinking going back you know probably six or seven weeks now yeah um <laughs> but yeah very very in depth and again i suspect that rather like that concealment one it will be it'll be sort of thing yeah you'll read a short paragraph and you'll go ah right yeah now i get gun jewels or whatever. Yeah, that's very good and you're right because that article it talks and it, and it kind of made something click for me instantly. I was mm. always unsure on the on the gun jewel. Who declares the gun jewel? Yeah, and it's usually the attacker, isn't it? And that's what that's what the kind of article talks about. It's the fact that mm. I think the defender is ultimately going to win that, or, or, or assumes to be the one that's shooting, unless the attacker decides he wants to kind of compete for that shot. Yeah, and even knowing that, which was is called out in the article, um, is is really good info, isn't it? It's good. Yeah, it's very very good. So yeah. yeah. I, uh, yeah, I it's, it's it's the thing with with, with ASL, isn't it? Is that it, it is complicated, but the rule book has a certain amount of interpret. You, you have to work at interpreting it, don't you? And yep. somebody digesting the rules and explaining them, it's still complex. It's still lengthy, and you still have to exercise your brain to get your head around everything. But have it being explained by somebody who's already processed it. Yeah, in an article like that, is very yep. very useful. Yeah, absolutely. It's very very good. Yeah, very yeah. impressive. Excellent. Well, okay, so we will continue to enjoy the dispatches and we'll we'll play another scenario from it, I'm sure. Yeah, I think uh, so. Yeah. Uh, next time. So um, next up, we've got Toby talking about entrenchments. So here we go, Toby. Take it away. Okay, I've just come back from um, Blackpool, the Bounding Fire Tournament, which was great, and had a chat with um, Dave and Martin up there. And I thought uh, one area to go through bit by bit that uh, listeners might find useful is to, to look at fortifications and entrenchments. And, you know, so if I start with foxholes and work through, you know, trenches, wire and so on. So let's begin with foxholes. Now, um, <clears throat> foxholes in ASL are uh, often criticised for their depiction in the game being unhistorical. And I would agree that uh, in ASL they are pretty much useless. I mean, I'm going to tell you some of the uses for them, but <coughs> they're nowhere near as good as they were historically. You know, you hear about troops digging in quickly on positions they took. Well, in ASL, you know, most players, certainly I, try to avoid using foxholes as much as I can because the problem with them is that you can't skulk um, because you have to spend that extra movement getting out of the foxhole. And that's critical. Um, many people think that the rules should be changed so that they, they act more like shell holes, where the, the move to get out of the, uh, of the foxhole is combined with the move into the next hex. But be that as it may, it's not. Um, so, yeah, it's unhistorical. I suppose you could say skulking is unhistorical anyway, isn't it? It's, it's slightly ridiculous. The, the troops don't move backwards and forwards. But to my mind, I see it as an abstract way that the game sort of represents well-crafted defensive deployments and the benefits you get from those. But anyway, most of the time, you won't be using Foxhorse, but they do have some uses, and I can think of four. Um, so the first one being cover, of course. You do get plus two TM and plus four against OBA and uh, overruns. <coughs> Um, but as I say, you can't skulk. So there's not many troops that I'll ever put in foxholes. I mean, I'm thinking light mortars, possibly Russian medium machine guns, because unless they've got a leader, it's difficult to skulk with um, with medium machine guns, Russian ones, because you'll end up CX'd most of the time if you go back into a woods or a building. Um, uh, they're good in stand and die positions. You know, if you have to... Uh, retreat back and um you know the enemy's got to get you out of a certain hex <laughs> and there's nowhere to skulk in that hex then a few foxholes 
scattered around there can be useful because you're thinking, well, at this, I'm going to be prep firing. Once I get to this point, I can't skulk. I'm going to be prep firing. Um, and, you know, against specific things that Foxholes are good at, you know, uh, OBA, um, then, yeah, you know, put your men in. If you're going to get bombarded, start them in Foxholes if you can. So, you know, they, they, they do provide cover, but um, the lack of skulking, uh, makes it a sort of uh, devil's bargain, really. You you <laughs> you'll often find skulking is much better than uh, the taking the benefit of the foxhole. The second thing they can be used for um, is constructing fire groups. So sometimes, say you've got a you can get a group of three in a building, a fire group, three hexes, and then there's a row. Or I don't know. A gap and then another three hexes of more buildings and uh, you know you can have one a squad in each of those hexes and at the moment you've got two different fire groups of three squads sometimes a foxhole in the middle can connect those two fire groups and that can be useful um, and I'll tell you when it's particularly useful is in PTO when you have a string of foxholes behind a large area of kunai because um, what you'll find is, you know, you can lash out with fire lanes and um, fire groups. And your opponent coming through the, the kunai um, can't easily fire group multi-hex locations in, in kunai. So um, there's, the odd, there's the odd position where a well-placed foxhole, okay, you're giving up the skulking, but you're, enable, you're enabling yourself to do a sort of extended fire group. And that could be useful. <laughs> um, the other thing, routing, I mean, most people know about this, is um, if you've got a squad that's a bit isolated, or a group of units, and you uh, there's a gap, an open ground gap before another batch of buildings or woods that you would rather they route in, and you want to avoid the possibilities of interdiction, then um, a well-placed foxhole can link your units and give you route paths and that's undoubtedly useful and that's what i mean i suppose i would say that's what i mostly use um foxholes for myself and lastly i would say um and this is very little used actually uh use foxholes to increase the fog of war because imagine this imagine this situation you know you've got no concealment counters and the opponent sets up on board um and uh, let's say he's got a line of sight to most of your troops, but you've got, I don't know, a dozen foxhole counters you could place. Now, of course, according to the rules, those foxholes can set up hip, you know, so you, you set up all your units, you write down that they're in foxholes, and then once your opponent's deployed his men, you say, okay, you've got line of sight to these units, I'll put the foxholes on. <clears throat> but you don't have to set them up hip. What you can do you set them up on top of your men already. And by doing so, you know, until he completes his setup, he can't look at what's inside those foxholes. So, you know, it might be that you've got a key heavy machine gun or, I don't know, whatever. And you want to sort of disguise where your, your units are. Um, and sometimes putting foxholes on top of units when you don't have to um, is kind of a, a way to use them as pseudo concealment counters. <laughs> I mean, of course, they, as soon as he's finished setting up, he'll have a line of sight to these things and, and he'll see what's there. But crucially, you'll have affected his setup. So that's it, really. Uh, foxholes, um, not, not as useful as they are historically. I much prefer, much prefer trenches, but we'll be coming onto trenches in my next um, um, piece. Okay. Okay, well, that was Toby. Martin, your thoughts on foxholes now? Well, yes. Yeah, so um, I'm not going to use them anymore. I'm gonna... <laughs> Do you know, I, I genuinely think that I've spent my entire ASL career thinking I wasn't a good enough player to understand how to use them effectively. And now Toby's just explained, yeah, <laughs> they're not very good. But, but there, there's some interesting situations where, where, where you know, he, he makes use of them. And I'm going to try to 
try to remember those four situations. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very good, yeah. very good. Right, so we're gonna um, we're gonna sign off by saying that we're gonna start our look or search for a, a game that we can stream. So if you have a scenario that we can stream, you think would be uh, what we usually about four hours is about our kind of sweet spot, isn't it? Um, yep. So my dog wants to be played with, so I'm gonna have to go in a minute. Um, so we'll we'll try for a, a Twitch stream very soon. With the internet is good now, so we can absolutely stream in confidence that that will work without a doubt. And we're going to have a talk about a face-to-face -face game as well that you and I are going to play. So we'll um, we'll do that sometime with the Christmas holidays as well. So Christmas hats at the ready. Can't wait. Yeah, I think we'll uh, we'll figure something out. Um, until then, if you've got your play by mail games, please let me know the results for the tournament. Um, I'm hoping to wrap that first stage up by the end of the year. You've played quite a few now, Martin, haven't you? So I've completed one game. I've got two games very close to completion and a third game really just sort of getting going, really. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. Well, until next time, Martin, we'll um, we'll catch up with you then. Thank you for the game at Blackpool. And uh, we, we had good good fun. And, yeah. Uh, I'll see you from Monty. <laughs> two seconds. So, okay. So until... <laughs> Until then, we'll catch up with you later. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Do you like hey. my little booth? <laughs> I do okay. like your little booth. <laughs>